Good morning. Welcome po sa press briefing ni Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abella. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, magandang maga sa lahat. Uh, this morning, like as like we promised, it's going to be part of a series of uh, personalities who we've asked to share on the first 100 days of the president. And uh, part of this is trying to understand, uh, not just to know what he has done, but also to try to understand the president himself and the way he applies himself to what, uh, to his uh, to his work as a president. This morning, uh, no, before that, uh, we began with uh, we began with uh, George Barcelon, uh, PCCI, and also Donald D, former PCCI head, and then yesterday we had Peter Wallace of the Wallace Business Forum, and today. We have Secretary Jose Almonte. Um, he was the uh, actually was a subject of an article in Esquire magazine uh, in 2013. It's called the Unfinished Revolution of Jose Almonte. And maybe just to uh, give a little bit of backgrounder, uh, it's, there's a short uh, intro that says Jose Almonte is not as scary as some people paint him to be. Upon closer scrutiny. The sinister, quote unquote, former national security advisor is someone with a deep rooted Christian faith and an indomitable love for the country. Now, in his 80s, does he look 80? <laughs> he has uh, 84. He has something to say, and anyone who won't listen, they say should be shot for treason. <laughs> okay, let me just try to give you just a brief background there. Secretary Jose Almonte was National Security Advisor and Director General of the National Security Council in the Cabinet of Philippine President Fidel B. Ramos from 92 to 98. He is a graduate of the Philippine Military Academy in 1956. He won the Distinguished Conduct Star for Gallantry, serving with the PMA, uh, with the Philippine Military Contingent in Vietnam from 66 to 69. I'd just, just like to jump, there's a whole lot to be said. In 95, he was awarded an honorary doctorate in public administration by the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. And in 98, he was given the country's highest award, the Ancient Order of Sikatuna for Outstanding Government Services. Service. He has published four books, Toward One Age Southeast Asia in 2004, My Part in the 86 People Power Revolution in 2006, We Must Level the Playing Field in 2007, and Endless Journey, a memoir in 2015. I heard him uh, speak in a short, uh, in a roundtable discussion yesterday, and I felt he was, what he has to say is worth hearing. So I'd like to welcome Secretary Jose T. Almonte. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for the kind uh, introduction. Uh, I have so much to say, but I was told by Rocky I have to brief. <laughs> well, uh, I'm here because yesterday I was invited to a roundtable discussion, and the secretary was present, and he felt that uh, I must share uh, my sense of the situation with uh, you distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. So let me just be brief. Uh, I worked with President Ramos from 92 to 98. And uh, one of the things I did, did really is to address the poverty, inequality, corruption in the Philippines. And to be able to do that, we have to look at the sources of this. Why are we in this situation? And again, to be brief, uh, in my sense is this. We are here because number one, we have not solved our internal problem of fighting each other. We, have, uh, we may not be aware of it, but uh, we are engaged in an internal war for the last many years, I would say, since we recovered our independence in 1946. This is the longest communist insurgency in the world, and we are uh, at the same time uh, having a problem of our separatist movement in the South. So that's number one. Number two, uh, our broken politics. Uh, the problem is this. Only a small group, 
special group that in a way in a general formulate the policies national policies of, the, of this government and it is implemented for their interest and this happened as you know every after election as we know this center of political power where we are in this country uh, is under the hands of this small group that funded the election okay number three again to be brief uh, we have a problem of iniquity. We have a problem of uh, how business is run in the Philippines. The unholy alliance between politics and business. So, as I said, and I published a book on this, which was one of the uh, materials we used during the time of President Ramos, is how do we level the playing field, both in terms of business and in terms of uh, land. So that is why during the time of President Ramos, uh, by the way, uh, that regime had only 24.3% uh, of the votes of the people. So we didn't have like President Duterte who has over 40%, etc. So our authority to that extent uh, is influenced by that outcome of the election. So the most we were able to do is really to dismantle the PLDT monopoly. Uh, we changed the uh, rules in the inter-island shipping, in insurance, in banking, and others. Uh, but we have so many problems that has to be addressed yet. And that remaining problem is the unfinished revolution that uh, the secretary uh, told you earlier. And what are these? This is what I mentioned earlier. This is our uh, uh, internal war, our broken politics, and uh, the business which is monopolized by a few, and the politics. Now, incidentally, this is what President Duterte is primarily addressing. And to me, the misfortune is this. Uh, and this is what I'm most afraid. In fact, this is the reason why I agreed to speak here. Because I felt that if we can solve these three basic problems, this nation will become rich in a decade or so, even less. But uh, if this is derailed, it will be very tragic again for all of us. And I am afraid that the concentration of, uh, uh, let's say, the media, you might get angry with me, but that is, I think, the truth. But uh, anyway, off the record, no? <laughs> uh, uh, live, live. Oh, is it really? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, I'm not taking it back. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the truth is this, we are, uh, our, the national attention is focused, and I cannot blame the nation in terms of the extra, uh, the, yeah, extra judicial killings, which is a component of the campaign against drugs. This is the concentration. And then uh, the other one, other concentration, which distracts the nation, is the colorful language of the president. Am I correct? Now, all right. To me, these are, if I may say, according to me, trivial, trivial things. We can correct this. The most important thing are the three points that I have stated. And uh, as I said, I repeat, the reason why I agreed to, to talk to you and uh, this is among the few times that I talk to the media this way, is the, the, the reason is my fear that the three things, fundamental things that President Duterte would like to address uh, may be jeopardized because of these things that I have mentioned earlier. So maybe, Mr. Secretary, uh, I understand I have only a few minutes. Mm -hmm. That will be okay as a background. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions? Um, Raymond Tinasa, 
Bombo Rajo. Sir, good noon. Uh, good morning. Sir, just your views perhaps on the shaping new foreign policy of the Duterte administration, uh, especially on his track uh, going away with that the U.S. and moving closer with Russia and China. Let me put this in perspective. Firstly, so we will understand this more fully. The foreign policy of a nation can never go beyond the strength, internal strength of that nation. Okay? In short, foreign policy is merely an extension of the national situation. Okay? That is why if we had to have an effective foreign policy, we have forced to ensure that our nation becomes rich, prosperous, and strong so that we can relate with the people outside, not as a, 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 not as a dependent, but as somebody who could be useful to the world. Okay, okay, having said that, uh, uh, let me say this, that uh, in general, uh, the sense is that we have to be friends of everybody. Even our enemies, we have to befriend them because they are potential friends. And, uh, you know, our friends could be potential enemies. This is the reality in the world. This is re a reflection of who we are as human beings. And this is the raw material that, uh, where we all play together. So the question, now may I go to your specific uh, question? Uh, let me say this, that uh, the Philippines could remain as friends with our old allies like America. But at the same time, we can be friends of all others, even the enemies of America. And that will be the best policy given, in fact, a situation where we are not as powerful as the rest. So I repeat, to me, the best foreign policy is let's maintain our friendship with our old allies but at the same time, let us work very hard to become friends of others, even if they are enemies of our allies. So, so I also have read your sterling record, especially as an intelligence officer during the, in the Vietnam War. So b based on your in the experience as that, what could you advise to, if you may, as necessary, you may advise to our president on how to successfully uh, gain what you have just said, to be friends with everybody, and yeah, and even to the U.S. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> you answered it. What do you want me to say? No, <laughs> considering he is doing otherwise, just what you have said. Because I see. I yeah. see. Well, uh, we have already expressed uh, what is, uh, in our view should be done. And he's the one who will decide, not us. Thank you, sir. Ina okay. Dulong, CNN Philippines. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning, sir. What do you see as the possible consequences of uh, the possibility of the Philippines breaking its ties with the U.S. or at least becoming less dependent on the U.S.? Well, your last one is very good. The best way is how to be less dependent, not just with the U.S., but everybody. May I put it this way? I had a personal experience on this, which I will not give the details. But I know that President Obama's view is this. He believes that a strong Philippines, a successful Philippines, will be in the best interest of America. You know, we are part of the so-called first line of defense. And given our situation, we are perceived by the region and the world as the weakest in the, in the chain. So it is in the interest of the allies that we become rich, we become prosperous, because we will be a, uh, rather than a dependent partner, we will be a, not just independent, but a contributor to the partnership. 
So let me put it that way that uh, I'm not speaking, I'm not the spokesman of the United States, <laughs> but uh, let me say it categorically that it is in the interest of America that this nation progresses. Uh, Henry Uri, DCRH to be followed by Pia Ranyada. Microphone, please. There's a microphone. Uh, General, good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, President claims that the extent of uh, proliferation of illegal drugs now has reached to classify as a national security threat. So do you agree, sir? And if you agree, what then should be the national security strategy to eliminate this threat? Well, first, you have two components in your question, that uh, the drug problem has become a national security threat. I am inclined to agree with that premise. And uh, let me tell you that uh, in the relations with nations, it has been historically shown that those who would like to destroy other uh, country for their advantage, they use drugs to weaken the fiber of that national society. It happened to China, and this is what they claim. In fact, the rationale for really, uh, uh, you know, recovering their old glory is because they do not want to, the indignities of the past because of drugs to repeat. Okay, having said that, the other one is I agree on the strategy. Is that your question? All right. Uh, uh, yes. What should be the strategy? Uh, well, look, uh, this drug problem is not unique with the Philippines. This is a problem all over the world. It's a problem in America, and a big, big problem. Now, some states in America try to rectify the problem by legalizing it, but much of the states of America is not uh, doing that. Now, other countries, <coughs> sorry, other countries, other countries, uh, they use uh, less uh, violent options uh, by education, by rehabilitation. But there are also those who use violence. Now, by experience, it appears that uh, the result, uh, even with those who applied violence, like in Bangkok just uh, a few years ago when Shinawat was the prime minister, uh, it did not end. Uh, it did not end uh, the drug problem. So you are asking me what is the best. I wish I can tell you. Then I'll be president. <laughs> but but do you agree uh, how the president handles the problem? Uh, well, again, uh, uh, that's a nice question. Huh? You are putting me on the spot. <laughs> Uh, well, let me put it this way. Uh, I, this is not, I think, I perm now I am uh, speaking uh, uh, more than my capacity, my, my competence. But let me do it, say it just the same. Uh, this uh, problem, I would suppose, I mean the strategy or the present program of the president, I think, I think it's not permanent. Now, uh, we are not sure if these things, uh, you know, uh, if the drug problem, uh, in his view, is now manageable, he will change the, the strategy, I suppose. And I think uh, if you agree, he might uh, change it later, uh, sooner than later. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Henry, Pia, or Rappler. Uh, good morning, sir. Sir, you used to be the National Security Advisor. Uh, what do you think of President Duterte's recent pronouncements on defense um, agreements with the U.S., for example, his desire to end the war games with the U.S. and also to review the EDCA? What do you think of this in light of the West Philippine Sea dispute we have with China? Well, at the surface, uh, the oh. impact at the surface is negative. But I say at the surface because I don't want to underrate 
the strategic thinking of the president. Now, uh, I don't want to elaborate on this because uh, I do not want to, to pretend that I know him better. Let me just give you an example, although it's not a very good one. But it will indicate to you what I'm trying to say. Before the election, or just after the election, she said so many things against her by his vice president. Am I correct? You recall? Yung magkaaway sila? Tama ba yon? You recall? Vice President Lenny. Hindi pinapansin. Tama? At saka mayroon pang mga salita na medyo mahanghang, hindi ba? All right. But look, later on, uh, President, uh, Vice President Lenny went to Malacanang. He even kissed her hand. Uh, am I correct? I saw it on the picture. Tama ba yun? So, what does this mean? Oh, you make the conclusion. Okay. Sir, just to follow. Uh, you have to think uh, more than uh, <laughs> more than the surface, you know. Okay. Sir, earlier you said that the impact on the surface would be negative. What do yeah. you mean by this? Well, because if you take it as it is, uh, the, remember our allies like President Obama, the United States, they have their own feelings. The military who conducts this, they are planning. So if you say they will not continue, you know, if you are in the organization like the military, when you conduct an exercise, that is not done just like that in one week. That is prepared for months. And they have to simulate. They have to, to practice by themselves. Why? Because in the military, for exercises, the maximum uh, allowed uh, casualty, if I remember correctly, is 3%, 1%. If they have a, a casualty more than that in a military exercise, the commander will be called martial. Okay. So it's not that easy. So you could see that there are uh, uh, negative feelings because of organizational or operational uh, uh, constraints. Raymond Tenasa to be followed by JP Bencito of Manila Standard. Raymond. So just to clarify your statement that you believe that U.S. wants us to prosper and to be strong. Yeah, I never said. Do you have said that uh, U.S. actually wants us to progress and to be a strong country? Of course, yes. Can you, do you believe so? I mean, please uh, correct uh, my thinking because is that the actual, considering that they are giving us uh, ships from their junks, refurbished uh, one? You know, uh, we are live on TV, no? Yes, if I say this to the public, I have no permission to express this on TV from people who talk to me. But uh, you read, I have uh, published a book, Endless Journey. You read the epilogue there. And it is there. I narrated this there because it is written because if there's any objection, at least I have a basis to answer them. But for here, if I will say that, baka naman sasabihin ng U.S. Embassy or what, I'm trying to promote myself, you know. But it is written there. You look at it, it's available in fully book in National Bookstore, Endless Journey. Epilogue is written there. Who, why, and what? Okay? Yeah. Sir, I asked this question because I think as far as the uh, statements of the president publicly on where he is coming from against U.S. and why he wants to cut, actually, to break up with U.S. is because we are not getting what we should be getting as allies of the U.S., you are right, and I have experienced that myself before when I was in the government, and I cannot blame the president. But I was also told before, like for instance today, we bought F-50s from F-A-50s from South Korea. Yes, sir. There are no missile uh, weaponry according to the publication. Well, uh, I do not know the arrangements between the Pinoy government and South Korea. But what I know in the past, all of this technology, which comes from America, exported to South. to South Korea, when they re-export it to another country, they have to ask permission from the source. Yeah. And this is true for everybody, Israel and others, especially Israel, because they are the ones who 
are very active on this. Now, the missile system is, they have to ask permission. But I don't know how much it will cost now of the missile system. So maybe we will only buy it when we exactly need it already. If we do not it, need it now, there is no need to spend. You can spend the money somewhere else. But look, I am not competent to really explain this. But it's just my personal sense. That's why there is no weapon. But you want the weapon, you can buy it anytime. But if you don't need it yet, there is no need. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Raymond. JP Bencito. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, we'd just like to... Send it to us. Hi, sir. We'd just like to press on the earlier question, sir. Um, you mentioned that uh, the president... Ha uh, the Many people are fixated to the colorful speech of the president. Yes. Sir, um, is it good for the president to continue cursing other world leaders? You, um, U.S. President Barack Obama, the EU, the UN, sir? You know, I am here to speak, according to me, to the best of my ability to speak for the people, not for anybody. Okay, that's why I'm here. So to answer you, I don't want to be misunderstood. Because I might be uh, uh, misunderstood. Oh, I did too much. I don't want a partisan. No. no. Uh, I would say that even the president may not uh, realize that it's not good. So I am hopeful that he will change when the time comes. Sir, uh, thank you. Po. Sir, on a personal note, um, sir, do you explore the possibility of um, joining the Duterte administration in the future, sir? Ah, hindi po. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm sorry, Mr. Secretary. Okay. I'm old already. I could no longer work, you know. I am just here really as an extension, just to be able to still be useful. In fact, I was hesitant to talk to all of you because I don't want to be misunderstood. I am happy this is live. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, JB. Alden of Kyodo. Microphone, please. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, as a national security expert uh, who has doubled in the South China Sea issue, if, uh, do you think that if the Philippines does go through with uh, breaking ties with the U.S., do you think it could also affect uh, its uh, relationship with other U.S. allies in Asia like Japan, um, South Korea, and uh, I'm not sure if Thailand is already is still a U.S. ally, but do you think it might affect that? Do you think they might shun us away? Okay, I think the, the answer to that is more complex than, uh, than just saying uh, this and that, you know. Uh, do we have time? I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, you know, in the Asia, Asia Pacific, Indo Asia Pacific today, this situation is really defined by the relationship between China and America. Okay? That is the reality. Now, in the South China Sea, the problem is this. China uh, believes that the South China Sea is an integral part of their uh, dream. Now, what is their dream? Their dream are three, according to Ming Fu in his book, Chinese Dream. One, the first one is internal, uh, uh, internal design, they call it. Then the regional design and a global design. Uh, since 1978, the reform of Deng Xiaoping, up to today, they feel that they have already attained the internal design. They are rich and powerful. Now they are on a regional design, and among them is about the South China Sea and the others, the Indian South China Sea. Then after this, they will go to a third one, the uh, external, uh, uh, the global design. Okay, let me explain uh, this. The South China Sea is not merely a source of uh, minerals or whatever. In terms of their global ambition, it, it functions like the Sea of Okhotsk. The Sea of Okhotsk is north of this uh, Japan Sea between Kamchatka and uh, I think the Kurils in the north. This was the sub nuclear submarine pen, pen of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Now the South China Sea, according to experts, is being uh, viewed like that. In fact, the islands now uh, that have been uh, converted, the rocks converted into islands, and uh, some of them now are, have uh, uh, vessels that can berth 
or uh, sustain these uh, these uh, vessels uh, are among them these uh, things I'm telling you. So uh, we could say that uh, the South China Sea is an integral part of so of uh, the Chinese uh, thinking. Now. The problem for the U.S. is this, and they, I give this to you. If China will control the South China Sea by merely using water, sand, and patience, this will have an irrevocable, irreparable, immense implication to the security of the United States, especially in terms of its global leadership position. So in that sense, it will be very difficult for America to allow this to happen, correct? Now, I'll go to your question. If this happens, you know, in the Asia Pacific, the Philippines is part of the so-called forced island chain, okay? Now, if it so happens that in the future, uh, China controls the South China Sea, now, uh, there will be a serious re-examination of the partnership alliances in this part of the world. Now, how about the Philippines? The Philippines is, as you know, and as they say, is the weakest in the chain. Now, your question is, uh, what happens if we quarrel with America and then et cetera? Well, you have now to imagine the consequences in terms of the context I told you. Okay, sir. Given your statement, sir, saying that uh, the uh, the nations in Asia is uh, defined by their affiliations either with the U.S. or China, how do you think it uh, would be possible for the Philippines to remain neutral? Because uh, uh, the logical conclusion to that, sir, is it's either we are with China or either we are with the U.S. Uh, correction. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I did not say that. What I said is. The situation in the Indo-Asia Pacific is defined by the relationship between America and China. Okay, sir. Now, what is their relationship? They do not want to go to war with each other. They know that. It is counterproductive for them. So what are they doing? If it is possible to cooperate, they cooperate. If it is necessary, they compete. If the competition becomes so serious, uh, they relax and then review the situation, look for points of consensus, and return the equilibrium to the old one. This is their strategy. Okay? This is what is happening today. And this is the, this is the thinking of both, both. By the way, China says, uh, when Xi Jinping, not Xi Jinping, Yuhin Tao uh, visited America in January several years ago. Uh, he said, it's very difficult for America and China to go to war. We have 95 points of institutional contacts. And this is being reviewed every year by the strategic economic dialogue that is being held alternately in Washington and in Beijing, participated in by the highest officials. The result is uh, reviewed by the president of China and America. So they are so confident that these things will not happen. That is in that sense. Now, ang sabi mo ano yun? Pilipinas, America, what? Uh, uh, my question, sir, is uh, can the Philippines remain neutral, sir, um, uh, in its relationship with either China or the U.S.? Uh, ito sinasabi ko in the beginning. We maintain our relationship with America. But at the same time, let us befriend all the others, including China. Now, you call that neutrality? I don't know. Maybe you could call it active neutrality. Neutrality is that good enough? Huh? Uh, okay, uh, sir. Because no, no, hmm. you must be convinced because you are going to write. Okay, sir. Sir, because you, you you told us, sir, that there's conflicting interest between the U.S. and China in the South China Sea. So, if we side with one, if we if we side with, oh, sir, uh, you know, this is not black and white. As I told you, they are enemies but they don't want to go to war, okay? So they cooperate when there is a uh, reason for cooperation. They compete when there is, uh, it's impossible to cooperate. This is the relationship between, this relationship, it, this, the friendship here is different between you and your girlfriend, I'm sorry. <laughs>
this is a very practical and uh, utilitarian uh, friendship. If I give it to you. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alden. You can write it well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Thank you, Alden. Henry Uri, DCRH. Sir, um, if uh, I may ask you this question. Um, a while ago, you have mentioned that our country's problem are uh, internal war, uh, broken politics, and monopolized business. Our president uh, is already um, on his way on on uh, making our, our countries into another 100 days. But but the first 100 days, how would you rate his performance? Well, uh, if I look at it in terms of the three fundamental problems of the Philippines, and let me repeat, if we cannot solve these three problems, our nation, we, uh, put it another way, we can never build the Filipino nation the way we want it to be. So these three must be solved, and President Duterte is confronting it. And that's why I'm here talking to you, because I think that is best for the nation. Now, if it is best for him as president, excuse me, it's really incidental. Because I believe, personally, because this is what I have done during the Ramos administration. And I've written it afterwards because we were not able to finish it. It's the unfinished revolution according to uh, Square, although I did not say it that way. Now, I, you are asking me, well, how do you rate him? I say this, based on what has been done for the next 100 days, exceptional. Exceptional. Uh, look, he has, uh, he has <laughs> and I mean, uh, in ordinary things, what he did is not uh, really uh, conventional. He assigned the cabinet uh, positions to known leftists, correct? He, is now, he has now uh, arranged an uh, indefinite ceasefire with the, with the left. Is that correct? And he is now negotiating the social economic component of the peace process that they are hammering out, correct? And this is very important. Now he's talking to the MNLF and the MILF, using his personal influence to do that. Now this is key to our development as a nation. Otherwise, we cannot correct our corruption, our inequality, our poverty, everything, including the corruption of the judiciary. But if we can solve this three, all of this will follow. Believe me, I hope the nation is listening. Thank you, Henry. Uh, uh, this yes. is a viber question from our colleague uh, Deo de Guzman of DCXL. Um, he said, is it prudent for President Duterte about bad-mouthing USA in terms of security? He even said that CIA is trying to kill him. What is your, I think uh, he's asking for your opinion on that. Well, uh, I really, I hope you, your friend will understand I cannot comment on speculation, you know. Uh, uh, please, uh, 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 in privately we will discuss. Let him see me. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, more questions, Benji, Benji Liwanag of DC Double B. Good morning, sir. <laughs> yes, yeah. Sir, uh, can you react to some mga statement the president lately? with the soldiers, paghandaan natin ang terrorism. Uh, as a former National Security Advisor, uh, what's your assessment on this, sir? Well, you know, uh, it's not only President Duterte who thinks that way. All leaders I know in the world, especially in the developed world or in the free world so-called, feels that way. Because the fear today is the convergence of mass destruction, mass destruction weapons with the terrorists. That's the fear. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, insofar as terrorism is concerned, there is a complex background of that. Why there is terrorism in the world today? And you will understand why in France uh, there is so much uh, terrorist action. Uh, you will understand why the 9-11 happened in the United States. Now, the historical antecedents that converge to create the situation so that young people are motivated to engage in asymmetric actions mm -hmm. at their expense 
is because of this kind of situation that developed. Now, I think the Pope and the others understand this, and they are uh, doing something about it, if I may say so, to their credit by their statements. But this thing, this problem, which has accumulated for centuries, cannot be solved in one century, if I may say so. This will take time, and it, this is part of the development process, I think, of mankind, so that later on we become, uh, we elevate our uh, qualitatively uh, human condition to a better, higher way, you know. As of now, uh, we are sometimes our uh, lesser angels dominate us, so. If we're going to uh, compare the terrorism before when you were uh, the National Security Advisor and the terrorism right now, Sir, uh, how, how, uh, how would you uh, assess it? You know, that's a very good question because uh, ako, I was a national security advisor, you know. During that period, she asked, you know, SKJ, the Sheikh Mohammed, uh, Khalid Muhammad, Khalid, yeah. the one who claimed he planned the 9-11, he was here in the Philippines for a few years, and uh, he was our subject of uh, investigation, you know. Uh, and uh, if you recall what happened uh, in uh, the explosion in Malati, where General Rason recovered these uh, CDs about the plan of the these terrorists to bump uh, Washington, uh, I mean, uh, White House, CIA, and the Pentagon. Task Force Bujinka. Uh, this, uh, yeah, uh, Oplan uh, Bujinka. 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 Yes, this is a book published in England. That's ours, that's here. Uh, you will note that uh, this, the preparation of this was during our time. And it happened after us already. So the impression that it has, uh, it is worse today than before, it's there. But if you ask me, it has always been there. Although the actions now are worse than before. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Benji. Uh, questions? Done, okay. Um, Ian Cruz of GMA7. Secretary Almonte, yes. you mentioned po kanina no, na exceptional yung mga nagawa ni Presidente sa kanyang yeah. 100 days. Uh -oh. But you mentioned... Uh, that exceptional is a three. It's a three, oh. Yeah, uh, please make that clear. Apo, it's a three uh, problems, major three problems. Three fundamental problems that I, to, I feel this nation has to confront, has to resolve in order to become a real nation state. Apo, pero nababanggit niyo po na may distraction, ano, dahil dun sa colorful language ni Presidente Tama po. and extrajudicial killings. Tama uh, po. Paano po natin ma-address ito? Sina, na, na, nasab, nakausap niyo po ba ang Pangulo tungkol dun sa dalawang uh, ah, hindi po. In, uh, uh, by the way, yeah, I hope the President does not take it against me. I have not met him. So I don't know him uh, personally. But I am saying this because what I read, read in the papers as what he wants to do is this. And by coincidence, I believe that this is what is best for the nation. As the Secretary said, uh, I have said it uh, before, and by the way, I kept that secret because I don't want to dilute uh, the president's uh, thinking, you know. I don't want people to interpret that I have anything to do with thinking. There is none. It just so happened that uh, what he's doing is what I thought before. And that is why I am here to talk to you. I was asked, and the reason is I believe that he's doing the right thing on this. Sir, you also mentioned that you're hopeful that he will change. What kind of change, Pong? Yeah, I'm what hopeful. Kind of yes, yes, yes. Well, if he can make his colorful statement colorless, uh, that's a big change for me. Ano pa? Ano pa problema ni Presidente? Yun lang naman siguro eh. Ano pa? Meron po ba iba? Ian? Okay na? Oh, okay. Thank you, MPC. More questions? No more? Okay. Sigurado kayo. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary Almonte. Okay. Thank you, um, Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abel. Uh, okay. Yes. 
Secretary Abella? May, may tanong kayo sa... May statement muna. Secretary Abella, you have oh, a statement? Yung mga tanong kahapon, uh, I'll still need to get back to that maybe by tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, just, we'd just like to stress uh, a few points for, for, for this morning. Um, I'd just like to first say thank you to uh, Secretary Almonte. Uh, <laughs> Secretary Almonte. Joel Almonte. Joel Almonte. And, um, you know, you can just appreciate the, the way he's able to uh, go through very complex situation, very complex uh, issues in a very uh, fine, with a very fine comb and able to distinguish uh, certain issues in a very, uh, how do you put it, in a very significant manner. And uh, we also like to, uh, personally, uh, one of the reasons why we asked people to come in here was be able to uh, be able to see clearly, objectively, uh, the results of the first 100 days. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, quite a thing to hear him say that, that the first 100 days, according to the three points, was exceptional. Uh, taking off on that, I'd like, uh, like to point out that for today, the latest uh, President Duterte ended his first three months in office with a net satisfaction rating, the first for the current chief executive that bested um, those of most of his post-EDSA revolution predecessors, except for Fidel V. Ramos, according to a social weather station survey. Um, as you very well know, it says that the balance of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao found 76% satisfied, 11% dissatisfied, and 13% undecided regarding Mr. Duterte's performance in his first quarter of the first quarter of his presidency. So we just like to uh, we just like to say that uh, the president seems to be an, off on a very good start. Um, uh, seek, uh, piggybacking on that is uh, the World Bank report that the Philippines is expected to accelerate by another six uh, to accelerate to 6.4%. According to the newly released East Asian Pacific Economic Update, among other large economies, prospects are strongest in the Philippines where growth is expected to accelerate to 6.4% this year. Also, uh, another point of uh, interest is that uh, the BOI, the Board of Investments on Tuesday, October 4, said that the investment commitments approved in September this year soared to 200% a soared 200% to 51 billion from 17 billion a year earlier, reflecting strong investor confidence in the Philippines and indicating that growth is sustained and accelerated. For the first nine months, approved investments grew by 50% to 286 billion, the BOI said. Investments are coming in, coming in are in sectors that will elevate our competitiveness, such as power and infrastructure, Severino Rodolfo. Trade Secretary and BOI Managing Head said, okay, the investment pledges were generated from 192 projects with a total estimated job generation of 37,487 expected at full operations. Rudolph also noted that imports have also increased, basically driven, of course, by the coming Christmas season. Um, the tax reforms in the conference uh, the tax, if tax and other economic reforms are also expected to spur capital market activity. In a conference organized by the international law firm Latham and Watkins, government officials and business executives cited the 10-point socioeconomic agenda outlined by the administration in consultation with the private sector. And they said that the, the planned reforms will allow capital markets to play a bigger role in financing companies that invest in projects supporting economic expansion. In other words, there's a thrust not just towards hot money, but actual uh, foreign direct investments. We'd like to confine the questions here, if there are any. Questions, Marisal Halili, TV5. Hi, sir, good morning. Sir, morning. where can we attribute the very good net satisfaction rating of the president? It was based on uh, apparently the, uh, the perception of the people that he was doing his job. But what particular message does this uh, survey convey to the critics of the president? That the people trust what he's doing. Okay. And that there's no basis for the critics? It's not, that's, not, that's not saying that. It's simply saying that the people, in spite of the noise, are continuing to trust the president. Sir, 
can I just have a confirmation with regards to the appointment of uh, the ambassador to China and yes, Malaysia? Yes, that's already confirmed. Chito Santa Romana. Mm -hmm. How about Charles Jose, sir? Uh, we, um, I don't have word on that yet. Mm -hmm. Are there any other new appointees? Uh, none so far that I know. But Chito Santa Romana was confirmed. Uh, I got the confirmation last night. Okay, thank you, thank sir. You. Question, uh, Hannah Sunshine TV. Hannah Sancho. Sir, reaction po sa sinabi ni Defense Secretary Lorenzana na um, na misinformed lang daw po ang Pangulong Duterte. I think he corrected that. Okay. He corrected that. It was their mistake. And, uh, no, he was saying that perhaps they were remiss. Okay, so uh, he, 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 he corrected that statement. So, clarification, sir. Hindi po, yung, hindi po wrong ang information na no. kukuha ng Pangulo? Ang sinasabi na na baka sila nagkulang. Okay. So, there's still a possibility na magbago po ang uh, isip ng Pangulo regarding sa joint military exercise kapag nagkaroon po ng mas magandang uh, assessment ang, uh, ang uh, DND. Ang sinasabi lang po niya is uh, uh, kulang sila, uh, no, not, makmukhang sila ang nagkulang and, uh, they may, and they're still awaiting for uh, actual uh, tawag nito, actual uh, decisions coming from the President. Sir, saan po nakuha ng Pangulo yung basis niya na walang pakinabang po yung joint military? I mean, hindi, hindi na pakinabangan na mga Filipino soldiers yung joint military exercise despite na ilang beses naman tayo nagkakaroon ng war games with the U.S. forces. Uh, pa part of it siguro na, for example, katulad ng sinabi nila, na, sinasabi nila na, uh, ang talaga namang, uh, at sa pagkakaintindi ko, pagkakaintindi ko, na ang talagang, uh, uh, nag, nag, nagkakaroon na benepisyo yung, kanila, yung mga sundalo ng Estados Unidos dahil lang sa sila yung natututo. Eh, hindi naman sinasabing wala tayong nakakuha, mayroon din naman tayong natututunan, pero sinasabi parang mas, na, mas nagiging ano sa kanila, mas nagiging pakinabang para sa kanila kesa sa atin. Um, sir, um, na-mention na ng Pangulo yung uh, nire-review ng legal team natin yung EDCA. Okay. At uh, parang ang dating lang naman ako. Parang papunta niyong Pangulo doon na gusto niyang, kinoconsider niya na baka i-scrap mm. ang EDCA. Mm. May, in the previous administration, yung uh, VFA po, pinaga, uh, I think, uh, ni-review ni nila. Tapos hanggang natapos na lang yung termino ni Aquino. Wala na po nangyari kung ano nangyari doon sa pag-review nila. Uh, sa Duterte administration ba, i-review na rin po ba natin yung VFA at ano yung position natin sa VFA po? Ay, ano po, talagang pinag-aaralan po ang lahat ng ating mga treaties. Yun na po masasabi natin at this stage. Any other question? Yeah, uh, Raymond question. Tinasa? Sir, just your reaction to the new U.S. State Department uh, statement. Una, mahaba raw po yung kanilang pasensya. Pangalawa, yung they believe that the bilateral relationship of the Philippines and U.S. remains strong. At tanongin nyo pa daw yung mga bawat Pilipino would say that also, Ayaw daw nila makipaghiwalay kahit gusto na makipag-break ang Pangulo. Uh, katulad po siguro ng pagkakasabi kanina ni uh, Secretary Almonte, uh, yung ano, ang ginagawa naman natin ay hindi pakikipagputol, kundi nilalawakan lang natin ating options for relationship. Siguro pag sa relasyon, makipag-cool off. So, paano natin hindi mating? Po, uh, okay, nilalagyan mo ng salita ang aking bibig, okay? No, hindi no, no. What I, cool. I'm, it's from me. So okay, siguro, so, bahaya nito, pag sa relasyon, cool off kasi hindi naman total break up. So, e ayaw ng US, how could we uh, actually apply what the presidents want to? Ang alin po? Kung ayaw... Hindi naman po siguro cool off, kundi open relationship. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Raymond. Thank so, you. So, huling, uh, huling tanong uh, po, yung dalawa na lang. Yung uh, dalawa. Sige, Ian, to be followed by uh, JP. JP. Microphone. There. Secretary, Secretary, uh, Yusek, nandun po ba kagabi sa meet sa Senate uh, anniversary sa Old Senate si Presidente? Ah, uh, hindi ko po alam yun. Mm. May reaction po ba kayo? Tong... <laughs> <laughs> Opo, kasi... <laughs> the, um, right. Napabalita po kasi na pumunta siya doon sa... Um, I'm sorry, I don't have uh, information. With I was in, at another event. Opo. Kahapon naman po nagsalita si Senator De Lima doon sa isang forum at okay. nabanggit niya ang Pangulo doon. Ano po ang reaksyon ninyo doon? Um, again, siguro what we can say is uh, she is entitled to her own opinion. Okay. Thank uh, you. JP? Sir, may last daw si Benji Liwanag. 
Hey, sir, good morning. Sir, would it, uh, pressing on the statements of Secretary Almonte, sir, uh, would it, it be helpful for the President to lessen his curses against um, other uh, world leaders, sir, because of the colorful language that he has been making in the pa this past few days? Um, as we said, uh, we need to look beyond the style and into the substance of the President. So uh, from where we stand, uh, uh, we, we allow the, you know, uh, it is the president's call to moderate or to modify whatever he wants to do. Okay, thank you. Sir, can, uh, can you, uh, no, can you give us information dun sa meeting with the, in president with the DOTR, <laughs> Secretary Togade, yesterday? Uh, I don't have uh, uh, input regarding the matter. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sir, how about what happened to the meeting with, uh, between the president and the American groups, yung Philam Life and yung American... Yesterday, yung sorry. Yesterday, yesterday, the insurance companies? Yes, for the American insurance companies. I think that was a close-in meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank okay, thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you, Secretary Joe Almonte. Sec thank you, Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abella. Yes. Uh, meron pong, ano, we, we uh, si President Almonte, ah, President Almonte. <laughs> 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Binibigay yung ano, uh, there's a, there are uh, giveaways. Giveaways, uh, loot bags. <laughs> More backgrounds. Okay. Information. Basically, ito yung ano, yung basis to speak, basic na ano. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, Secretary Joe Almonte. Thank you, Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abella. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Back to our main studio sa Radio Nabayan and PTV Channel 4. All right.